Hello there, dear listener. I am your host, Erwin Blackthorne, and this is the Dirty Lore House Podcast, coming at you with all the deliciously nutty dirty lore. Uh, today, we are going to talk about Tiffagate, which is a deviation of Tittygate. This is going to be one of the first times where I'm going to make a video that I didn't script, so enjoy me stuttering and mumbling and talking too fast and making no sense of what I'm trying to say as my brain gets scrambled like a goddamn egg. Uh, but before we're going to be talking about Tiffagate, we're going to be talking about what the Dirty Lore House is all about. You see, people are very confused, especially people who have seen that I don't really touch it on Mines and I stopped touching it on Reddit. To say it very basically, I'm a writer. I try to be an artist. I want to be a game designer. But I suck at all of them, except for writing, so I stuck with writing for the most part. And I guess I'm sort of trying to stick to YouTube too, but let's see how that goes. <laughs> YouTube or any other video platform like Rumble or BitChute or maybe even Gab or something, whatever consumes the the what I like I like to consider something like YouTube and Facebook as like a neo MySpace and like a like a neo uh what was that one thing called? It was like an old video platform. Um yeah like a neo albino black cheap that's the one. <laughs> oh my goodness. That one really ages you. That's like uh the silent generation. <laughs> that's like the silent generation form of internet stuff. Oh my goodness, you can already hear me sputtering. So, the Dirty Lore House is a group. It's a helpful group. We try to help each other out. Uh, you know, take a penny, leave a penny. But you don't even have to take any pennies or leave any pennies. No, cut that out. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to do anything. You can just ask for advice. We are free. We, we love to help out. I really like to help out writers because I know about writing. I really like to help out stuff about aesthetics because I study aesthetics here and there. I can't really help out people with art, but I more or less know about pixel art, so some people ask me for help here and there. Um, I'm always a, We're always open to give our opinion. Um, I just wanted to be a very free form of any other subreddit or any other group that tries to appeal to some kind of artist people, but artists are just really hard to deal with. They're all prima donnas. They all... Uh, being an artist is like being a toddler now. Like, you had to baby them. You had to hold their hand while they're trying to, like, go on their easel. And, try, and even then, they go, no, don't hold my hand. I don't want you to do things for me. So it's really difficult to deal with artists. And um, I used to be one of those people who was really difficult. And I know the feeling. I know the ego. I know that people can get possessed by their their muse or whatever they want to blame. But it's all in your head. It really is. So, as Dirty Lore House, we want to help people not only grow as artists, but also grow as salesmen. To be a good artist, and to, in order to sell things on the market, you gotta be a salesman. You can't just be an artist and hope that people are gonna be buying your art. And most people who do art, they don't do it for their own free time, they do it so that they can make money on the side. That's what people want to do. And if you're able to sell it, and also make art that you want to make, well, then hell, you're hitting two nuts with one stick. It's really disheartening to see people, they say, oh, I don't want to make money with my art. I just want to make art for me. It's like, well, what the fuck are you doing then? Why are you talking to me? You are <laughs> asking for my opinion when you're doing it for yourself? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, calm down. <laughs> so when people are doing this, it bugs me. I hope that they stop doing this. And that's why I started the group, because... I see far too many people just messing up completely on how art is supposed to be done. Yes, there is a form, and yes, there is like a specific way you're supposed to do it, but not in the way that you think. A lot of people, they make up all these rules, all these author tubers, they make up rules 
They think that people are going to make the same story as them or make the same art as them. And no, it's not how it works. Okay. There are rules. Yes, but they're not the rules that people make up. If that makes sense. Like there's made up rules and then there's the real rules. And I want people to understand that there are real rules that you should follow in order to get whatever goal you want. It's in relation to the goal that you're trying to make. I guess you can call that relative, but I don't want to use that word. <laughs> Because then people say, oh, then it's not real. As a dirty little house, we are pro a lot of things, and we're anti a lot of things. Um, it might be completely different than most groups that you've ever been into. And this podcast is going to be directed at these particular pros and cons. Um, I am one of those people that believes that not all art has to be political, but you should at least understand some politics if you want to make political art. Does that make sense to you? I see all the time people are making political art here, there, everywhere. Blah, blah, blah. They're all over the place with Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, everything. They want their art to be as political as possible. And they want everybody to think that their specific political position is like the correct one for everybody. Um, No, that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how it works at all. You have to be, you have to be open to new ideas. You have to be open to other people's positions. And that's what I want to be. I want to be open to other people's positions. Call me a dirty liberal if you want, or call me a dirty uh, alt-right alt -right, alt -right fascist if you want, because I'm open to ideas, but that's what you got to be in order to be a good writer. You can't be closed to certain ideas. How are you going to write your villains if you don't know what your villain is even thinking of? How can you write like some something that's wrong if you don't want to engage in that wrong thing and understand why it's wrong? Like, who the fuck are these people that they think that you can write about a murder without looking up anything about murders? I've met people like that. They think, well, I mean, they don't talk about murder. I'm just using that as an example. But there are people out there that they think, oh, this other position, if I don't understand it, I'm safe from it. And then so they just close their ears, close their eyes, close their mouth. They're like the three monkeys, but with like six arms trying to close everything off. Six arms are just uh, two very large hands with some big thumbs they can put in their ear holes. But you know what I mean. I'm rambling. You know what I mean. Uh, there are people out there that they don't want to do this. So the Dirty Lore House is very pro-capitalist. We're very pro-capitalist. We want capitalism to be appreciated for what it is. It's a person being independent and owning their own means of production as their own business owner. What's an artist without owning their own art business? What is an artist? What if they don't have... If you want to be an author and you want to sell your art, sell your story. You have to be a businessman. Well, who's going to own your art? Who's going to own your book if you're not the business owner? You wrote it. You probably did your cover by yourself. You probably didn't even bother doing the cover. You probably hired somebody else to do it, some freelancer. That freelancer right there is a capitalist. You are a capitalist because you're trying to sell your book for royalties. Royalties, you know, if you were trying to sell... <laughs> oh my goodness, my English. But you know what I mean? You have to be a capitalist to be a good author. Most authors, or most inspiring, aspiring authors, Aspie authors, whatever you want to call them, they're not capitalists. They're almost all socialists and communists, and they want to promote these horrible ideas that don't help the person who's trying to sell things. You can't sell things expecting people to buy it from you. Who the fuck do you think you are? You think people are just going to hand you money like you're homeless? You had to look very pathetic for people to hand you money. You can't pretend like you're homeless and then you go, no, I have a house, I have a car, I have all these things, I just want more money. Oh, good luck doing that in front of a, I don't know what people shop these days. Good luck, <laughs> good luck. Good luck doing that in front of a kindergarten, whatever these, wherever these socialists and communists hang out in front of. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when I say kindergarten. These people, they're disgusting. I know it's not all, but... It's too many. <laughs> it's too many of these people. So we're pro-capitalists. I hope that people start to understand what capitalism means as we go through discussions and I start talking more and I stop rambling. So if I'm able to focus my thoughts, then that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, we are pro-indie. As the Dirty Lore House, we want this house to be full of individuals, independent creators. If you want to make a YouTube channel, go ahead, make your own YouTube channel, do it. Just 
do it right. Do it in a way that promotes your work. Don't do it in a way that makes people turned off and run away from it. So I hope that people can be helped in that way. So as pro-indie people, we don't want people to be in traditional publishing. Traditional publishing, I would say, is dead. It's dead, but it's still alive, and it's very big. It's like um, it's like Elvis in his later years, where he ate too many peanut butter and jelly hamburgers, whatever the, heck he was, whatever the fuck he was eating. Peanut butter and jelly pizzas. I don't know what the hell he was eating, but he ate too much. He was unhealthy. He was dying. He still had concerts. He still had gigs. He was still with a lot of money, but god damn it, if he didn't go to that one single toilet, if he didn't, <laughs> if he didn't, if that toilet didn't kill him, he would still be here, but this is the fate of traditional publishing. They're on the toilet right now. They're pushing. They're pushing so hard you won't believe. The veins are popping out of their head. Their their knees are buckling. Their <laughs> Nothing's coming out. Nothing at all. They're forcing so much. Is this? There's like there's like a little bit of blood coming out, and they're like, "Oh my god, something's coming! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna finally be able to, <laughs> I'm gonna finally be done with this." But no, it's just blood, sweetheart. There's nothing coming out. You're trying to squeeze blood from a stone, whatever the heck that, water from a stone, blood from a stone, whatever the heck it is. You're just gonna cut your hand doing it. That's what traditional pub- that's what traditional publishing is doing these days. I don't like it. I hope that people learn not to trust traditional publishing. I almost for like a while I was like maybe traditional publishing isn't that bad. Maybe there is something to it. And then I looked into traditional publishing and I had people telling me, "Hey, the fuck you doing? Traditional publishing it's not exactly what you think it is." Like, everything you had to do in traditional publishing, you're going to do it in indie anyway. If you're a traditionally published person, you have to promote your book on social media. You don't have people marketing for you. Look at look at Lindsay Ellis. She had all these people marketing for her. She still fucking failed with traditional publishing. She thought she was going to make it big. No, she didn't. She made it subpar. And that was it. But, you know, I don't want, I don't want to get too far into that one. All right, so we're into indie, right? Traditional publishing is dying. Indie is a new thing. Many people are making indie books, but guess what? Guess what the fuck is going on? None of these people are salesmen. They don't know how to sell shit. They couldn't sell dog food to a dog. They they couldn't sell a turd to a turd burglar. Alright, these people are idiots. They're trying to sell... They're begging. They're begging out there. Please, please buy it. Buy it. I I don't know what to do. (laughs) I promise it's good. Really? You promise? Why didn't you make it look good then, you idiot? Why didn't you sell it well to me? Why didn't you make it for me instead of for you? It's written for me, but I swear maybe you'll like it. Really? You think I'm going to like it when it's written for you? You special snowflake you? This is what happens to people. They don't know what they're writing. They're trying to sell. They write it for themselves, but they try to sell it to somebody else. Are you mad? That's what's going on. And I hope people learn it's not about you. It's not always about you. You know, get off the high horse. Get off. Stop being a prima donna. Lose the ego. Stop making it about you. Make it about your audience. Make it about your audience. Sell it to them. Boom. Already you're, you're light years ahead of all these people. Uh, another thing is that we are very pro-libertarian. I know it sounds corny, all right, libertarian. Ha ha. Uh, I bet you are an ANCAP, or I bet you're, I bet you're some kind of crazy ANCAP that thinks uh, taxation is theft. No, I, I honestly don't. That's not libertarian. <laughs> libertarian is also not whatever the fuck Vosh is. Like all these people, they call themselves libertarian. No, that's not libertarianism. Libertarian is to have the liberty to do things. So when it comes down to art and aesthetics, call me a hippie, but I think that everybody should have the right to do whatever art they want to make. I'm very open to that. I think that any art, as long as it's not harming people, or you know, directly, you know, you can't you can't like shoot somebody in the school and call it art. Like, what the fuck is that about? Where are you? Um, are you trying to? <laughs> I'm trying to one-up the Columbine kids. I mean, maybe they can consider that art, but 
I don't think that's a healthy kind of art. If everybody does it, then, you know, only a couple people can do that before we start running low on material for that kind of art. So that's why I think libertarianism is a good way to explain it, but I know that people can get misunderstood and people will misunderstand this kind of position. I just hope that people understand it as a kind of liberal, classical liberal thing. Everyone has the right to sell something. Everyone has the right to uh, affiliate with each other. You know, stop the cancel culture. Stop this nonsense where, oh, you said something wrong that I don't like. That changed with the Overton window for like 10 years ago. Who the fuck cares? Some people, they say so many things. Oh, you offended me. You know, like, who cares? It's an artist. They're meant to offend you. That's their whole goal. Their whole entire goal is to get your attention and offend you and make you think of something different. I mean, that's what an artist's goal is usually supposed to be in like a modernist kind of way. But welcome to the postmodernist world, bitches. We have all these people saying, no, that's not right. You can't do that. That's harming me. You're harming my, my, my representation. You're harming my diversity. You're harming my minorities. My marginalized people, you're harming them. Oh no, stop it. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you're overreacting over nothing. So I hope that people under- can kind of understand that kind of position. Like, libertarian, very liberal, liberty, classic liberal, I mean, not the <laughs> liberal, but classic liberal. And I just want people to make art. Is that so hard to understand? Is that too much to ask for? People have the right to make art if they want to. They have the right to affiliate with others. They have the right to be on some kind of social media if they want to. But, you know, good luck telling social media heads about that. Oh, no, you can't be on our platform. You know why? Because we don't like what you say. Okay, what did I say that was wrong? You said the truth. We can't have the truth around here. That's almost every single social media position now. You said the truth, and you're not allowed to say that. Well, guess what? The truth is going to be out there one way or another. Why the fuck are you trying to hide from it? Oh, we all know why they're trying to hide from it. Because they're evil, greedy corporations. Evil, greedy corporations ran by all these people who are on the woke side. And that's one of the people that I don't like, but, you know, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But another thing that I really want to emphasize on is that the Dirty Lore House is totally pro-religion. All religions are welcome. I don't care what your religion is. I think that religion is perhaps one of the most oppressed things out there, or at least what people colloquially know as religion, because who are the people that are being constantly casted out of art circles? It's the Christians, it's the Mormons, it's the Muslims, it's the the Buddhists, and it's the 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 jews and it's all these people who are religious they just wanted to say something and they also want to like you know you can't even say merry christmas anymore what the fuck kind of country is this i thought this was the land of the free i'm not free to say merry christmas anymore without somebody going all crazy and cuckoo it's like you say merry christmas and the person they start turning to like (laughs) they start turning to leatherface they start going crazy yeah it's like (laughs) yeah anytime you say merry christmas these days the person who, you know, like some liberal or some progressive who hears it, it's like they're like the agents from Matrix and they start like getting all zappy and then they like start shooting at you. And it's like, oh, we got one. We found, we found one of those people here. So religion, totally fine with me. I hope that people actually do talk about their religion more in books. I think that people are afraid of doing that. I've always heard of author tubers who are religious. They can't talk about their religion on author tube anymore because there's so many atheists out there that are angry at a religion, and they're like, don't preach to me, don't preach to me. And it's like, well, what the fuck? You're preaching to me all day when you're saying just your religion existing. Like, you telling me not to preach to you is you preaching to me. Because your religion is like, you know, don't believe in God or don't believe in a religion if you're, uh, what's that word? I forgot what the don't believe in a religion one is. Oh, secular, that's it. If you're secular or you're atheist, you're already preaching to me your ideology. So why can't I just mention mine Or at least say, hey, you know, if you are of my religion or you do believe in God or whatever, God bless. Something like that. But no, you can't do that anymore. Especially not on AuthorTube. All all these people, oh my god, I wanted to subscribe to you, but I can't believe you're a religious person. Really? Is that really what breaks it for you? (laughs) Because somebody had a different opinion than you? 
But don't worry, because over here, Dirty Lore House, we are pro-religion, but we are also pro-freedom of speech. So the thing is that just because you believe your religion is sacred doesn't mean I'm going to feel the same way about your religion. I think that if anybody wants to make a joke about a religion or a belief or anything, I think that's totally fine. Like, why would one be able... Why can't we just make jokes about each other? Unless you're afraid of the truth coming out, like some people are. But jokes? Ugh, why care? But that's the thing. That's the thing that I hate, is that now we have the woke skulls, now we have the woke people, the 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 communists, the socialists, the, the LGBT, we have all these people. Well, who else is there? BLM, we have the critical race theorists, we have the critical femme theorists, critical queer theorists. We have the, what's the other one called? Uh, progressives, we have all these groups gathered together just to say that freedom of speech is not allowed. That you're not even allowed to joke about things anymore. Radical feminists, whatever the heck you want to call them. <laughs> whatever the fuck you want to include into that group. They all say that freedom of speech is not allowed anymore. And that also goes for a couple of uh, other groups. No, the, the leftists, they want to say that now the... The Christians are the new woke because they say, oh, you're not allowed to have um, books in the public library that's against the Bible, you know, something like that. It's like, well, you know what? You open the floodgate. Why don't you close it? If you really want to, you open that floodgate. Why don't you put in the effort to close it? You allowed that to happen. That was your fault. And then you allow these goofy Christians to do the same thing. Oh, now it's a problem. Now it's a problem for you. And you're trying to show some kind of hypocrisy. Oh, now it's a problem when we're not allowed to have freedom of speech. Now you want freedom of speech. That's the whole gig. That's why they call them reactionary. Because they're reacting to your nonsense. But, you know, I'm, ra I'm rambling. So, the thing is that the Dirty Lore House is against is mega corporations. Because, why the fuck would you like a mega corporation? You think you're going to go to some trad come? <laughs> you think you're going to go to some traditionally published company? And you're going to work alongside with them when you don't agree with them politically? Hell no. J.K. Rowling is one of those authors where she got lucky. She got into the gig before it was like, you know, the whole woke nonsense. And she's a feminist and she's a woman and she's white and all these things that are supposed to be good and this kind of thing. But guess what? Even she's like, like anybody who agrees with her can get banned from their own company. And you're like, I forgot who it was. There's this one woman who she, I think she like retweeted or she like liked something or she just said, I agree in some kind of interview with something that JK Rowling said and she got her book deal canceled and she got kicked out of her traditionally published company. What the fuck is that about? That can happen to anybody. You want to, it's a job where you're telling people your ideas and if your ideas don't correlate with the traditionally published company the traditional publishing thing that you're fucked how can you work like that that's stressful dude i think that's horrible so uh, at this point i'm like you know fuck the corporations fuck the mega corporations fuck all these companies that they try to take control of the mass mainstream media you know the news like cnn even Fox News, you know, we, they all have their trouble. They all have their problems. I'm not going to point fingers at only one and then say, oh, well, the other side's cool. Like, no, they're, they're both big. They're too big for their own good. They don't know what they're doing. They're trying to get money. How do you get money? You make problems. And then you say, I know the way to fix the problem. And then people trust in you. And then you don't fix the problem. You just make more problems. And then you say, trust me, I'm going to fix it. And <laughs> It's like going to a doctor and then like every time they, they, the first time you go there, you go for like a checkup. You know, oh, I got a small cough. And then they go, well, guess what? I got a, a fix for you. I'm going to break your legs. And you go, wait a minute. Before you can say, wait a minute, they break your legs. You come back later. Listen, I got a cough still, but now my legs hurt. <laughs> and like, I got the cure for you. I'm going to fuck you in the ass. I'm like, wait a minute. No. And then before you can even do anything, they bend you over. They fuck you right there. Right there on the goddamn table. With the cameras on. Everyone's watching. Nobody does anything about it. That sounds horrible, but that's exactly what these people are doing. But yeah, I'm tired of mega corporations, tired of corporations in general, I'm tired of these traditional publishing companies, I'm tired of things like EA and things like Disney and all these crazy companies that they just 
they don't know what they're doing anymore. And then they just get more and more postmodernist as days go by. They get, they just want representation. Give me the representation. Give me that representation in Star Wars. But don't you dare put that black guy on the poster in China because we got to represent China too, baby. They're crazy. Who the fuck do you think you are? Who the fuck do you think you are? Why isn't Chewbacca on the screen then? Why isn't Chewbacca in the poster in China? Huh? Why is Yoda allowed, but the black guy isn't? Are green people allowed in China? Do they have the green man over there? Maybe it's harmless. Who knows? But that's the thing. I Nobody respects these companies. I don't think this is like a weird position for me to take. What, like, what? Is there somebody going to defend this kind of nonsense? Is there somebody actually out there? Oh, no, you, you're you wrong. I think that's okay for these companies to make shitty games and make shitty movies, make shitty books coming out all day, every day. I'm pretty sure both left and right are against this. Nobody likes this, but who knows? There's going to be some corporatists out there. No, no, this is a good thing, and I'll tell you why. And then they explain, but they don't actually say anything. So that's that's the corporate thing. And then the other thing that we're against is wokeism. Wokeism is kind of hard to explain for people who don't know the, the term, but it's something you probably have heard of already. Wokeism is identity politics mixed with Marxism. So what happens is that you get people who believe there is some kind of Or I guess you can say postmodernist neo-Marxism. All right, I don't want to say Marxism exactly, but it's like a postmodernist neo-Marxism. So what happens is that you have people believe that nothing matters, nothing exists, everything is subjective, and at the same time you have to make everything cultural because that's the only thing that matters to them. Everybody's divided. Everyone's divided into groups. That's the identity politics. So your identity is involved with your politics. I identify, you know, let's say that somebody identifies as socialist, right? So then everything that's socialist gets related to them and part of their identity. So their personal history gets mixed with their political history. All right. I don't want to lose you so far, so I don't want to say too much in that whole thing. So what happens is that in wokeism, you have a group and they say, this group is marginalized and they just determine it by whatever the fuck thing they can use. And the whole entire time, wokeism has just become... We hate white people, but then it started like that, but then it became, we hate white cis males. Only that. That's the only one that's not allowed because apparently those are the people who are ruling the world because you have critical race theory, critical race theory, critical feminist theory, and then you have critical queer theory. So the queers are marginalized, the non-whites are marginalized, and the women are marginalized. So that only leaves one specific group, the white cis male. And so pretty much if there is a book or some kind of game or movie that has a white cis male in it, they say, that is illegal. That is wrong. That's unethical. You're not allowed to have that. So the woke people, they start attacking anything that has white people in it. And then also at the same time, uh, they'll attack anybody who says anything about the marginalized groups. So Lindsay Ellis, she got mar- attacked, quote unquote attacked, you know, <laughs> Like, she got as attacked as, like, when a kitten, like, tries to, like, paw your finger. Or, you're like, you know, like, you put your toes under the bed and, like, a kitten, like, tries to attack your toes. That's how much of an attack it was. And um, it was because she's a white woman who said something about Asians. And then people were like, you can't do that. That's illegal. And she didn't even say anything wrong. But she treated it like she was like, oh, my God, I'm being shot at. Oh, the, these people on Twitter, they're killing me. <laughs> I'm shitting blood. Oh. She just freaked out about it, and she couldn't handle it, but, you know, uh, poor baby. So, that's the thing. Wokeism is all about baby mentality. You, you know, Oh, I'm being attacked, I'm being marginalized, I'm being offended. You can't offend me, you can't marginalize me, you can't do that, you can't do this. It's telling everybody what they can't do, and, and, and whatever they do that's against their personal idea, apparently that's wrong, and they tell you how it's wrong, how you're evil, how you're racist, homophobic, bisexual, blah, blah. Bisexual. <laughs> I want to say bigot, but I just said bisexual. That's a Freudian slip. So, wokeism, it's a baby mentality. So, here in the Dirty Lore House, there's no babies. There's only hot babes, okay? No babies. So, that's about it. I can't really think of anything else that the Dirty Lore House is pro or con. Um, 
recap, I guess. Uh, Dirty Lore House is all about freedom, liberty, capitalism, trying to be a better salesman, trying to be a better artist, trying to learn about how to make your art better. Because there is a way to make your art better. Um, I know of a couple ways. I'm going to be talking about that later on in other podcasts. So, you know, stick to it, I guess, if those ever come around. So, um, the second topic I'm going to talk about in this first episode is Tiffagate. And it's also known as Tittygate. Like a couple years ago, I wanted to start something called Tittygate because I thought it was going to be edgy and shitlordy and hip and happening. You know, like people say, oh, titty, okay. And then they're going to like right away click on it, smash the smash the mouse into the, <laughs> to the fucking table. But what happened is that I just stopped doing it because I got banned from Twitter. I, I'm not, I don't have a Twitter, okay? I don't have a Twitter. People are like, oh, well, where's your Twitter? Why don't you join Twitter? Why don't you make another account? I don't want to, okay? Many people say it's better for my mental health to not be on Twitter. I'm not going to say that. I mean, it's true, but I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say it's better if I don't waste my time there because I only have so much time in the world and I have so many things to say bad about Twitter that I can say outside of it. So, you know, just a logical equation. No reason to go on there. What the fuck am I going to gain from it? Some people that might be on my side and many people that are not going to be on my side because I'm pro-liberty and I'm not woke? No, fuck that. Why would I do that? So, um, on Twitter, before I got banned, I had a conversation with a couple people. And when I say conversation, it was like they were flinging shit at me and I was like, you know, swiping it away. Like, I was just fucking swiping it away. I was like blocking, doom, 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 everything. They couldn't do shit to me. They couldn't, they didn't get one scrape of feces on me because that's how bad they were aiming and that's how good I was blocking everything. Nothing got by me. And the conversation was about uh, the the new, or, you know, back then it was a new Final Fantasy VII remake. I guess that was like, what, 2017? Let me check it out. Uh, Final Fantasy VII. That was 2020? Fuck. All right, never mind. That was like two years ago. <laughs> Feels like forever, but that was two years ago, apparently. And uh, in this conversation, they were saying how it was justified. It was good. It was a good thing that the character Tifa, Tifa Lockhart, she's a, a character in the game, one of the main characters, and she's like a uh, you know, Asian woman. Or I guess looks like Asian because it's a, f- a fantasy world, and she has like this like white shirt on with like these uh, suspenders and like a black skirt, and she punches people as her weapon because she's like this karate ki- karate kind of person. And um, apparently, according to Square Enix's ethics department, she was too busty for the game to be rated T. So they said, "Hey, you gotta clothe her up. You gotta cover that up. <laughs> you gotta cover her up." Put a you gotta put a hijab on her basically, you know she's showing too much skin. She show less ankle, and then they also had to remove some of the, her like breast size, so they remove they reduced it. So they gave her like one of those, uh, what what do they call it? The liposuction for the titty, um, breastectomy, whatever you call it. Yeah, they put her under the needle, the digital needle, to remove some of her breast breast material. Some of her titty meat was gone. Right, they threw it out there and they put some of that into Cloud's muscles, I guess. But that was the whole controversy for that game. Uh, Tifa was, uh, what's that word? Tifa was digitally mutilated because she was too sexy to be in a T-rated game, and they were threatening them with an M rating. And a game like that can't handle an M rating. Like this is a huge game with millions, hundreds of millions of dollars put into it. Who knows how many yen? was put into this Japanese game. What, you expect it to have normal looking women? This is a normal looking woman actually. I'm I'm getting ahead of myself, but <laughs> what, you think it's gonna have Western looking women? No, it's gonna have Eastern looking women. And they're gorgeous. And they're exactly what men want to look at. But that's not allowed because apparently what I found out later, way later, is that radical feminism is all about countering the male gaze. The male gaze is evil, apparently, and what attracts the male gaze is also evil because it's 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 helping the patriarchy. So, um, to say that in English, if there's a sexy character on screen, 
that's not allowed. You're not allowed to make a sexy character. You have to have the character look realistic, you know, quote unquote realistic. And all that means is you have to make them ugly, fat, bloated, retarded, and glasses, you know, deformities. You have to give them all these things that aren't glorified or idealistic. You can't have an idealistic woman. You can't have a, a, a modernist woman. You know, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing that really bugs me about this. Every single time I hear this kind of argument, it's like, what about forms from ancient Greece? Are we now not allowed to have ancient Greek statues? Because that was the form of beauty back then. That was like, you, you know, you have a, like a, 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 what do you call it? Like a statue of Aphrodite. When they made the statue, the person making it was saying, this is cultural beauty to a T. This is like the perfect form of a woman. Are you not allowed to have that anymore? Oh, but it's only bad when we do it now, right? It's only bad when we do it now. It's only bad if we make it into a video game and we sell it to teenagers because apparently telling teenagers that there are attractive women out there is a bad thing. It, it, the whole entire thing makes no sense. But these people that I was talking to on Twitter, they were trying to justify this whole thing. They were saying, first they said it was unethical to have her look like this. And I was like, what is unethical about a woman being attractive? They had no answer. They just changed it. They said, oh, well, it's not, you know, maybe it's not that. But it's because it gives the wrong impression of what a woman looks like. And I'm like, what does a woman look like? What's a woman supposed to look like? And this was before, like, we had the whole transgender thing going on. Like, this new, you know, like, Matt Walsh being on Dr. Phil. This was before this whole thing happened. This was, like, two years ago. It, it, it's transformed since then. <laughs> it went from radical feminism. Now we're just stuck with all these postmodernist feminists who are now woke. This was, I think this was actually before woke was a big thing. These weren't woke people yet. But we had this problem, and I just couldn't get an answer from any of them. One of them was this guy who said that he was like some kind of uh, ethic. Oh, what did he say he was? He said, he said he was like a social worker or something. I'm like, how the fuck? Is this person a social worker? And they're like the most anti-social person I've ever met in my life, on <laughs> online especially. So I had this anti-social social worker telling me that it's unethical because Tifa is too attractive. And then, and then, oh, and then they moved the whole conversation from, well, even if it wasn't unethical, there's no problem because they didn't really change much. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? They weren't supposed to change anything at all. Why was there a change in the first place if it wasn't that much of a change? And that's the thing about their argument that it makes no sense. If there isn't that much of a change, why change anything at all? They're basically saying, well, there was a character who was the size, you know, like what, like six feet tall, right? And they say, well, they only changed it to five foot 11. I'm like, then why didn't you just keep it six foot tall? There's no problem with it. What's the point? You know, <laughs> that's the thing. It's not the point of the change is the point of the reason why they changed it. They had an agenda behind it. I'm going to sound crazy now, but when a company has an agenda behind their decisions, that's where we had to point it out. Just like Anna Sarkeesian saying, there's sexism everywhere. There's sexism all over the place. Whatever the fuck the quote. I forgot the quote, but she was like, we had to point it all out. Okay. I'm going to point out all your nonsense. Then how do you like it? I'm going to point it out every single fucking time I see it. I can't really do it because I don't see much, but you know what I mean? If we point it out too, maybe they can get a taste of their own medicine. So Tiffagate, Tittygate, whatever you want to call it, it's all about pointing out this hypocrisy, this absolute nonsense with the woke crowd, with the radical feminists, with the postmodernist feminists especially now. It's all these people, they say, there's no problem, there's no agenda, there's no propaganda, this is just normal. This is the new normal. This is how it's supposed to go. And you go, no, it's not. This is what you're doing. And then you explain to them very clearly, very precisely, why do you change this if there's no reason for a change? For a more uh, recent example, I would say Lord of the Rings. Boom. Lord of the Rings, Amazon. Why the fuck is there a black dwarf? There is no black dwarf in the lore. There's no reason for the black dwarf. There's no reason for it to be female either. What's your reason for it? And they say, there's no reason why it wouldn't be. 
It's just there. There doesn't have to be a reason. It's like, no, there is a reason why you did this. Because you were trying to sell it to the woke crowd. And they're not going to watch it. You're selling it to the wrong people. They don't care. They don't have money to spend money. <laughs> they don't have money to spend on this kind of nonsense. And if they did, why are they complaining they're marginalized? That's the thing. That's the thing I don't get about this whole entire spiel. If you are marginalized, why are you the main buyers? If you don't have money, if you're not being represented or anything, why do you buy all this nonsense? Are you really just bad with money? That's that's why it bugs the crap out of me. It makes me go insane when I think about it. it it's all over the place. They have one excuse. Okay, why is this happening then? You just defeat the excuse, take it out. And then they come out with another excuse, another excuse, another excuse. And that's why you just have to pew, 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 pew. You just keep on deflecting, spin your sword around, collect all the bullets, and then you just fling the bullets back at them like uh, Virgil in Tell Me Cry 3 in the opening. <laughs> just fucking spin your, what was it, was it, uh, spin your Yamato katana, and then you just fling it back at <laughs> them. But that's the thing. It's all gaslighting. And they want everybody to, to be woke. And they think that woke is the only proper religion. It's the new religion. It's the new church. All the corporations are in charge of the church. Fucking, I don't know how people don't notice this. There's this game that I've been playing recently called Outer Worlds. And uh, people are like, it's written by socialists. And they're talking about how evil corporations... They're, no, no, they don't say corporations. They say... They're talking about how evil capitalism is and how evil religion is. And it's like, dude, I play the first fucking 30 minutes. You know what I saw? The entire game is about how mega corporations are bad and how scienceism is bad. Scienceism, the stuff that people are making fun of now when it comes down to, you know, uh, the, the the new pope, uh, the Fauci, right? The guy who, this guy is a new pope. He's the one who's creating this new crusade over in Canada. You better attack Canada and all those non-believers out there, those infidels, and take back uh, whatever whatever Canada, Canada's version of Jerusalem would be. I don't know. Canada doesn't have a Jerusalem, does it? Or like some kind of holy land? What's our holy land? Ottawa? Take over Ottawa. Put up a statue of me over there. <laughs> That's what these scientism people are doing. They're going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over there in Canada. I feel bad. But, yeah, you know, I don't want to get into politics. I'm just saying this game made fun of the left. Essentially, the left. What the left is doing in... Not the left, I'm sorry. Not, not just the left. It's the woke people. The woke and the scientism people. These new atheists. They're making fun of them, and they don't see it. And they'll just try to gaslight it. They just try to go, oh no, it's not about me, it's about you. It's about capitalism, it's about religion. Ha ha, ha ha, I got you. It's like, dude, you're just as religious as I am. You're just not a believer in God. And this game says the religion, scientism, is not a believer in God. It's a believer in, uh, what do they call it? Um, oh, that game's so hard to pay attention to some of the names. Uh, it's called like the great contractor, the great constructor or something. And it's pretty much like, <laughs> Anytime you hear those people talking, it's like listen to Sam Harris talking or something. But that's 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 the thing. That's the thing. These people, they don't know what they're talking about. They always try to blame the wrong side, and they hope their gaslighting works. It doesn't work. It's not going to work on us because we have a ground to stand on. They are trying to float above us as this cloud of just like a whole bunch of nonsense, hoping that we huff it in. But no, I'm on the ground, dude. What the fuck? Is, I'm not going to jump up there. You can't touch me. All right, you can't touch me because I am on the ground. I have solid ground right below me, baby. You can... The only way to harm me is if you use an earthquake attack. That's it. All right, you don't got that. You're doing all this stuff up in the air. You're twirling around, spinning around like a goddamn ceiling fan. I'm here on the ground watching you being goofy. That's how it works. But that's these people. They, they hate everything. They shouldn't even be called woke. They should just be called hateful. Hateism. Because it hates so many things. It's crazy. I hope that I didn't say hate in this entire podcast about things that I don't like. It, you know, it's a, it's a harsh word, but you know, most of the time if I say hate, oh, I hate this, I hate that, I hate corporations. It's like, I wish they didn't do that. That's my position on hate. If I, if I ever say it. It's just that it sounds funnier that way. You know, it's more emotion. But 
if I ever say that I hate something, it's like, I just wish that it didn't do that. I wish that it would change its ways, but I can't do anything about it. Maybe I hate the idea of not being able to do about it, but, you know, it's just a feeling. I don't try to act upon it. I'm not trying to go out there and advocate for things, but these people are radical. They're advocates, political advocates, and they're trying to put politics into your games. But not just any politics, it's their specific politics. And that's what people are saying when they say, I don't want politics in my games, I don't want politics in in my, 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 my Cheerios, I don't want politics in my yogurt, whatever the fuck it is. My beans, you know, <laughs> whatever. What, is, what was that thing about beans? It was like Gioa, uh, Gioa beans was like, oh yeah, we're pro-Trump and people were like trying to boycott beans. It's like, who the fuck cares? You just eat your beans. Eat your, eat your fucking Chick-fil-A chicken. Who cares about the gays? Just eat your chicken. If you like it, eat it. But they tried it so hard to make all these weird arguments. Oh, if you support Chick-fil-A, that means you hate the gays. It's like, well, you know... It's kind of weird for me because I don't support their chickens, but I do like their idea. <laughs> I do like their idea on gays. So I was like, I I, I agree with Chick Fil A, but I don't eat their chicken. Um, but these these woke people, they just want you to. Well, not you, but you know, if you're a white cis male, they want you specifically to bow down before them, pray for forgiveness. But it's okay because they're not a religion. But they do want you to flinch at yourself and bow down before them and beg to appease of your sins. That's what they want. But no, trust me, they're not a religion. It's not a church. Nope. Not a church. It's not a religion. They're atheists. Completely different, all right? There's no religion here. Just you're a sinner if you're white, okay? But not a religion. <laughs> and they put all this... But That's the thing. They put their religion, they put their hate into anime, into games, into comic books. And they have a hate for all these things that everybody likes. And then they try to change it into things that people don't like. And they go, why aren't people liking it? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because you make things we don't like. You ever thought of that, Sonny? It's amazing how daft these people are because they hope that people are going to believe in their political ideology and their own personal agenda. And then they get shocked when people don't believe it. What? What? We lost money on this? How could that ever happen? And most of the time, these mega corporations, they don't even care if they lost money on something. They just want to pull out the power propaganda, let it out there. It doesn't matter if they lost millions. Propaganda, boom. Some people believe that it's like a like a scammer. They like scam like a hundred people. If like one or two people fall for the scam, they made their money. You know, it's worth the time. That's exactly what they're doing. So that's why I am against these corporations. I'm against the traditional publishing. I don't like traditional publishing. Like what's there to like about it these days? Sure you get some books here and there that are good, but this whole agenda for diversity, representation, what's the other one called? Um, own voice. Like, now own voice is like a genre? LGBT fantasy? What the fuck are these genres about? Who the hell cares? Why? <laughs> what the fuck is LGBT genre? What do you do in that? Is it is it like gay sex? Are there just like gay sex running around like every single chapter? They just have like gay sex with a different person? What's the fucking point of LGBT? LGBT genre. And then we have like this auto fiction these days where it's like somebody will be trans and they'll like, or they'll be like, you know, gay or lesbian or bi or whatever the fuck you want to be, pansexual. And they'll make a story about themselves, but then they put themselves like in space or on the moon. I'm on, I'm in the ocean. I'm in 1800s now. I'm in a giant robot fighting against demons. You know, like <laughs> that was a reference to uh, Iron Widow. That was literally what Iron Widow was. It was just the uh, author... Uh, what's her name? Uh, Jirange Zhao. Jirange Zhao. I'm pretty, much, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering it, but... Jirange Zhao. She was writing auto fiction for her book. And I hope I can make fun of it later on <laughs> with, my, with my analysis videos. Because that one, whoa... First chapter, I love it. I think that's good. Up until characters start talking and then like the themes and symbols starts coming in. Whoa. <laughs> uh, it's like I opened up a book of tornadoes and I was like blown back. I'm like, oh my God, I can't see anything. My eyelids are like fluttering. Because <laughs> 
It was that kind of, oh my goodness. It was like that that meme of like Spongebob of him like, uh, what was it? He did something, but like his head's like all staticky upwards. But that's titty gay for you. That's me ranting about wokeism. That's me um, rambling. <laughs> and that's the thing. Titty gate, tiffa gate, whatever you want to call it. It's our main message. It's our main message of do whatever you want. I don't fucking care. I mean, when it comes to art, like, do whatever the fuck you want. If you want to take a shit on Jesus Christ and then call it art, okay, fine. Fair enough. That's your hand. I'll show you mine. And then I write a book about Jesus being good. Why can't we just have that? Why can't we just have two sides talking? All right, you want to shit on Jesus? I praise him. You know, it's like a game of chess. Or any game. Why can't we just have a game about it? You know, like, why can't we just have two sides working together to make a better message? But no, we can't have that because the corporations know they will lose. Their agenda sucks. They have to force their agenda on everybody. And they have to recondition everyone into thinking a different way. And that's why I don't like. So why can't we just think the way we always have? Why can't we think in a more traditional way? Not traditional publishing, but... In a more traditional way, why can't we have religion? Why can't we have holidays? Why can't we have a more old-fashioned way of writing stories, like fairy tales? Like, you know, not to reconstruct old fairy, old fairy tales, but to have, like, a new kind of fairy tale. That's why, I guess that's why people like creepypastas and stuff, because it was like a new kind of fairy tale. Urban legends. You know, boom, right there. It's like Beauty and the Beast, but it's on the internet, too. It's like... Jack and the Giant Beanstalk, but there's also like a Jeff the Killer thing, right? Like, that's what the whole creepypasta thing was about. And then it just became this flood of nonsense that killed it off because all these YouTubers, they, they wanted to make money and they became corporation like. And so they decided to kill themselves off by making only videos about, uh, what was it? Fre uh, Freddy Got Fingered, whatever that, whatever that automaton. <laughs> what was it called? Finance of Freddy. Finance of Freddy got fingered. That's the one. Oh my goodness. I can't believe they made a game where you get to run around some kind of mall. Well, was, was somebody playing Dead Rising 2 and they decided, hey, this needs Freddy got fingered in there. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> Finance of Freddy. It needs Freddy Frazbear in there. Let's see, what else to talk about? Oh, so Tiffa is the perfect symbol for a titty gate. Not only does she have perfect titties, and anything you can look her up in, even after the whole change. Here's the thing. Even after the change, even after they made her mutilated, that's the perfect word for it, mutilated. They mutilated her body. They destroyed the perfect shrine and temple that it is. They hacked away at people's religion, all right? Tifa is the religion. Her body is the religion or whatever the heck it is. They hacked away at it. They bastardized it. Even then... She looks wonderful. And even then, the game looks wonderful, more or less. But the gameplay sucks. And that's the thing I don't like. People find controversies about the game art or something in there, here and there. That time, I think there was also another game. It was like the Spider-Man one. And people were freaking out because they promised like something about puddles. And then later on, they're like, no, we had to change that because the engine couldn't handle it. And people were saying, oh, what the fuck did you promise that? And then it doesn't come out. And then other people were like, it's not their fault, it's just a puddle. Don't freak out about it. It's like, no, it's the ethic part about it. The ethical part. Did you forget that? It's about the ethical part. We want ethics in gaming, okay? That's what we wanted ever since Gamergate started. We want ethics in comics. That's what, I have, that's what, was, that was what, that's what we wanted ever since Comicsgate started. I remember Comicsgate. You? I'm old enough to remember. What? That was like two years ago, right? A gamer gay is way far away, but comics gay was recent, and that was all about ethics in comics. Like, people were changing comic books to be no longer about comic books. It was just propaganda for the woke, for the progressives. It became very political. And that's the thing that people don't understand. When I say political, I mean it became the politics of the writer, specifically, or the politics of the company, I should say. There was no more libertarian or liberal sense of the word political. 
It was just whatever that particular company wanted to project as propaganda. So maybe I shouldn't say political anymore. Maybe I should just say it was propaganda specifically for progressive and woke ideology. Anything pro-capitalist, boom, out of there. Anything pro, uh, what else is there? Anything pro-Christianity, boom, out of there. No, we can't have that. We had to show Christian. We had to show Christianity as evil. Not only that, but we had to say all Christians are Nazis. We had to say all conservatives are Nazis. Everyone's a Nazi except for my side. On my side, it's fine. We're not doing anything Nazi-like. We're not doing anything wrong, like, you know, freezing people's bank accounts because they donated to a cause that they thought was cool and perfectly fine because it's a protest of all things. We're not doing something like that. No, no, no. We're totally innocent. It's those people. Those people are the terrorists and Nazis. That, you know what I'm talking about. That's what happens in media, of all things. People don't want to hear that kind of nonsense. You know, like, they're playing... Like, what would you be playing? Are you playing, like, Borderlands or something? And all of a sudden, somebody starts telling you about their gender? And they're... <laughs> telling you how they're marginalized in space? Who the fuck cares you're in space? You're supposed to be shooting things. Shooting bounty hunters. That's the thing. that It just comes out at the worst times. Oh, that's the thing that I was trying to remember. I was trying to remember what Comics Gate was about. It was about, like, diversity hires and um, this strange, like, forced representation. Because they wanted to have comic books about, like, illegal aliens and... <laughs> what was it? What was that stupid comic book about a while ago? It was, um... There was, like, Dora the Explorer and she had, like, a magic backpack. But she was also, like, fat and illegal. And then there was a vampire, but he, like, it was, like, a vampire, and he, like, took too much internet juice, and so he would, like, drain your data or something. What the fuck was that? Do you remember that? Hey, you, probably, you guys probably remember that. I don't have to explain it. Just look it up. It was called, um, the Triggered, the Triggered Team or something like that. Yeah, my memory's not good. <laughs> In the words of Joe Biden, my memory's not so good. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's just a constant cycle. It, it it's Gamergate, and then it's Comicgate. Now it's Tiffagate. What's going to be next? Huh? Cryptogate? We're going to have crypto ethics now? We're going to need uh, NFTs to be only... only We need like more female NFT creators? What is going to be? It's going to be some kind of stupid nonsense that they're going to think of. I'm probably giving them an idea right now. Oh, so before I go, this is the first episode, just introducing everybody to everything. I'm going to explain some of the plans I have. I have a couple of videos coming out. It's going to be more about Lindsay Ellis. A couple more about... Um, I'm going to start making more videos about different author tubers. So uh, Jenna Moresi is on the list. Jenna Moresi is another author tuber who's really big, but um, she's also into the whole woke nonsense. And she tries to make people believe that in order to be a good writer, you have to be a good salesman. And you can just say, fuck the writing part. And it's like, oh my goodness, it's like right there. She's almost there. She's like, if you want to be a good author, you have to be a good salesman. It's like, no, it's salesman and writer, you numbskull. All right. <laughs> you don't have to easily just throw things out there and not care about your writing quality. Because her quality is just all over the place. She doesn't have quality. She has some skill here and there, but no quality. So, Jenna Moresi is on my list. Uh, Kristen Martin, or how do you say it? Uh, Kristen Martin, yeah, that's it. Uh, she, I'm also going to have a video on her because, unfortunately, she's been trying to be a cult leader ever since she started YouTube. And people are going to be like, wait a minute, what the fuck are you talking about cult leaders? It's like, no, I'll explain it in the video, but just a little sneak peek. Almost all these author tubers are cult leaders. They're trying to start a cult where they are the leader and people believe in what they say and they're all talking from the church awoke. But uh, Kristen Martin is a bit different because she's actually a Wiccan. Either that or she's a neo-pagan. I'm not quite sure, but you know, she's she's rather out there. She's like a whole episode of X-Files. She's... <laughs> I mean, she calls herself a starseed. What the fuck is that about? Um, I'm also thinking about doing another one on Daniel Green. Uh, I was thinking about doing one on, on Linkara, but I don't know where to start with Linkara because he's, ugh, he's quite the topic. 
It's like, whoa, how do I start this one? Okay, once upon a time, there's a guy called Linkara, and he liked to have butt sex online. It's like, no, I don't know how to start this one. So I'll find something. Um, oh, and then also I'm going to try to come out with a couple of videos, or at least some posts, on um, the actual act of writing. So I'm not just going to be making fun of people who are bad writers in the author tube kind of sphere. I also wanted to explain how writing works. And I also wanted to explain how the whole salesman thing works, because if you know about marketing, if you know about genre, I mean, marketing is marketing's easy as long as your genre and your, 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 your book is like the main piece of marketing. So you got to fix that one before you fix anything else. You know, the product is very important, surprisingly. I don't know why I have to explain that to some people, but <laughs> lo and behold. Um, what else? Oh, right. Uh, also, I'm going to be adding in a couple of episodes from my previous writings, my essays that I have on Minds and Reddit. And I'm going to try to make them into a video form. My vi- my essays there were about video games. I want to talk about more about video games, but I also want to talk about uh, actual tropes more. So if I have an episode where I don't know what to really talk about in the podcast, then I'm going to just talk about tropes. Or some kind of trope that really like intrigues me, or probably like a specific genre. I'm just gonna ramble on about that one for like an hour. So uh, if there's any tropes or genres you do want me to talk about, by all means, go right ahead. Let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about art, writing, um, something related to like you know being an author, or something related to like any trope or media, by all means, write a comment ask away. I don't mind. You're free to do so. I will try to answer it on the podcast. So um, at the end of every podcast, I'll try to answer all the questions. So this part where I'm rambling more, this is going to be the part where I'm answering questions. And I hope to see some of them. And if not, then I'll just probably make up some of my own questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just put in my own filler. Well, that's it for the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I rambled a lot, but that's just me trying to get up the ground rules and the setup for the whole concept of what I'm going to be talking about. And I hope to see you next time. So, till next time.